This is a picture test in practical anatomy of the reproductive system. You may use the video as a revision for the topic or as a self-assessment tool. For the purpose of self-assessment, I will allow two seconds of pause for each picture before starting to comment so that you may pause the video and spend your own time to read the question and come up with the answer. Then you can replay the video to confirm your answer by listening to the comments and explanations. Now I will deal with the gross anatomy of a male pelvis and a perineum. Identify the muscle, name two of its parts, and identify the bony prominence, name the ligament attached to it. This is a dissection of the perineum at the region of the ischioanal fossa, and this is the midline where the anus is located. And so the region of the ischioanal fossa is bounded medially by the muscle that is levator ani muscle. So the muscle fibers here are formed of levator ani, and the levator ani has several parts, pubococcygeus, the most anterior fibers, iliococcygeus, the middle fibers, and then the posterior fibers are called the ischiococcygeus, or sometimes in some textbooks they refer to them as a separate muscle, which is called coccygeus. So at least two parts of the muscle is iliococcygeus and pubococcygeus. Uh, you can also add levator prostate and puborectalis muscle. The bony prominence B is located on the lateral side, and this is the ischial tuberosity, and ligament, the strong ligament that's attached to it is the sacrotuberous ligament. Here you are asked to identify the muscle A and what is its function, name the fibromuscular structure located at the tip of the pointer, and list two muscles attached to it. So this is a dissection of the superficial perineal pouch of a male, and the muscle here is covering the bulb of the penis. So this is the region of the bulb, and actually it is two muscles having a midline raphi. And this is one muscle here, the other muscle in here, and this is the bulbospongiosus muscle. The bulbospongiosus as well as the ischiocavernosus here, both of them contribute to erection, but the bulbospongiosus has a special function is that it contracts the bulb and which contains the urethra so that it can expel the last drops of urine or semen. This function is not produced by the ischio cavernosus, which is located laterally. The fibromuscular structure, which is located here at the back of the urogenital diaphragm, between it and between the urogenital diaphragm or between the bulb and the anus, which is located here, uh, this structure is the perineal body. It is more developed in the female, and it uh, consists of fibrous tissue to which muscle fibers, multiple muscle fibers, are attached to it, part of levator ani, uh, bulbospongiosus muscle here, uh, superficial transverse perineal muscle, which is located here, and the deep transverse perineal muscle located uh, superior to it, and also part of the external anal sphincter. The superficial part of the uh, external anal uh, sphincter is attached to it. Name the sphincter that surrounds the opening at A. What is its main function? So to be oriented, again, this is a, a close-up view of the male pelvis. And you can see here, this is the pubic symphysis, the urinary bladder, with its apex and base in here and this is the region of the neck. The opening is the internal urethral meatus. It is surrounded by thickening of smooth muscle fibers, the trusar muscle of the urinary bladder, and the, this is called the either the internal urethral sphincter, or they call it the sphincter vesicae as well, which is probably more related to its actual function because it acts as a, a sphincter here. It acts as a sphincter for semen rather than acting as a sphincter for urine it during ejaculation it contracts and it will prevent retrograde ejaculation into the bladder so that the sperms and seminal fluid that come from the ejaculatory duct they can only pass into the prostatic urethra to the external urethral meatus
So again, this sphincter is made of smooth muscle fibers, the trousar muscle fibers. It's a sphincter of the bladder rather than a sphincter of the urethra. The sphincter of the urethra is located around the membranous part of the urethra, and it's called the sphincter urethry or the external urethral sphincter. The prominence at the tip of the pointer is a prominence within the prostatic urethra, and this is called the urethral crest, on top of which, on either side of its top, opens the ejaculatory ducts. Identify the structure A. What is the name of its forward continuation? And the other question is, where does the tip of the pointer B lie? So this is a, a section of the penis, and you can see here, the, this is the uh, co corpora, the corpus cavernosum, and another corpus cavernosum. And the backward continuation of the corpus cor cavernosum is the crust. So here is a crust of the penis that will continue forward into the body of the penis as the corpus cavernosum. So the crust here continuing as corpus cavernosum. So A is the crust, and uh, this region is the corpus spongiosum, and it contains the penile urethra. Note that the opening or, uh, of the penile urethra here is a transverse slit. Identify the structure A, be specific. Name the serous membrane that is closely related to structure B. So this is a testis and uh, you can see that it is covered by the epididymis. The epididymis has a head, body, and tail, and the tail of the epididymis will continue, it will continue upwards as the vas, as you can see it here. So this is the vas. That is one of the contents of the spermatic cord. The epididymis is a highly convoluted tube that grossly takes the shape of a head, a body, and tail, and it is the tail of the epididymis that continues with the vas. The serous membrane that is closely related to the testis is the tunica vaginalis, and um, this is the remains of the processus vaginalis, peritoneal process that was pushed in front of the testis while the testis descends down into the scrotum, and then the uh, continuity between the processus vaginalis and the peritoneal cavity is obliterated and we are left with the tunica vaginalis. A serous membrane that surrounds the testis, does not include the testis, surrounds the testis, it contains the serous fluid, excess fluid in this serous membrane results in hydrocele and failure of obliteration of the, uh, the continuity between it and the peritoneal cavity will predispose for the formation of a congenital or indirect inguinal hernia. Identify the whitish structure A. What is its function? And name the hollow structure at the tip of the pointer. Now, structure A, this is a thick fibrous tissue, tunica albuginea, that covers the crust, it covers the corpus uh, cavernosum. These corpora and the crust, they contain um, erectile tissue that will be uh, filled with blood uh, during erection and uh, so uh, being surrounded by a thick fibrous tissue will um, uh, help keeping them hard and maintaining the erection. The hollow structure at the tip of the pointer here is the prostatic urethra. You can see here that this is the prostate uh, in touch with the neck of the urinary bladder. Here is the urinary bladder in here and it is traversed by the prostatic urethra from the base to the apex and then the prostatic urethra continues as the membranous and then the penile urethra. So the direct continuation of the prostatic urethra is the membranous urethra that is located in the deep perineal pouch which is bounded by these two straight lines. This is the region of the deep perineal pouch. Identify the structure A here is the posterior aspect uh, showing the sacrum and here this is the common iliac artery splitting at the pelvic brim into internal and external iliac artery. So this is the external iliac artery and here it's accompanied by the vein, the external iliac vein. The direct continuation of the external iliac artery is the femoral artery as the external iliac artery passes deep to the inguinal ligament it forms the femoral artery. 
the structure that is crossing it at this position here, just close to the bifurcation, this structure is the ureter. Now regarding structure B, this is a branch of the internal iliac artery. Internal iliac has a posterior division. The direct continuation of the posterior division is the superior gluteal artery. And uh, this is, uh, these are branches um, that go to the lateral side of the sacrum. So these are the lateral sacral arteries, usually two branches. Then they will split into, each one splits into two. So we have four arteries that pass into the anterior sacral foramen. The other branch of the posterior division of the internal iliac artery is the iliolumbar artery. And this branch should go upwards from here. Name the venous plexus at A. You can see the prostate gland has its base above, apex below. And so the plexus here, the venous plexus is, that is in close proximity of the prostate is the prostatic venous plexus. The part of the urethra that passes into the prostate is the prostatic urethra. And the apex of the prostate lies on the urogenital diaphragm. So here's the region of the urogenital diaphragm. And these are the two facial layers that mark the deep perineal pouch and the urethra here is the membranous urethra that is located in the deep perineal pouch its continuation is the bulbar urethra or the penile urethra identify the perineal pouch a to be oriented let's look at some of the viscera this is the urinary bladder and here is the rectum continuing as the anal canal so the peritoneal pouch that we are pointing at is a pouch that is located between the rectum and the urinary bladder. It is the rectovesical pouch. Identify the structure at the tip of the pointer. So this is the anal canal. And the anal canal has a voluntary and involuntary sphincter. The voluntary sphincter is supplied by the branch of the pudendal nerve, which is the inferior rectal nerve. Identify the artery A at the tip of the pointer. Where does it branch from? So here, this is the penis, the glands of the penis, and dissection of the dorsum of the penis. We can see here that there is a vein, deep dorsal vein of the penis, and it's flanked on either side by an artery, and then more laterally is a nerve. So the vein is the deep dorsal vein of the penis. The artery is the dorsal artery of the penis. It's actually a, a continuation of the internal pudendal artery. The internal pudendal artery originates from the internal iliac artery. But this artery, the dorsal artery of the penis, is a branch of the internal pudendal artery. What is the female counterpart of structure B? Structure B is the scrotum, and the counterpart of the scrotum in the female is the labium majus, labia majora. List two nerves that provide cutaneous innervation of B. So several nerves provide cutaneous innervation of B. Mainly, it is the pudendal nerve providing scrotal branches, but the scrotum is also supplied by a perineal branch of the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh. Anteriorly, it is also supplied by cutaneous branches from the genitofemoral nerve and from the ilioinguinal nerve. But the main innervation comes from the pudendal nerve.